For those of us who grow up hunting, we want to pass it down, we want to share it, especially if you have kids. Well, this week we're going out to FTW Ranch for a new hunter program. This is a complete program, it's four days, where they take new hunters and show them from beginning to end how to shoot the gun, how to track animals, game laws, cleaning it, cooking it, and they get to do a hunt. With me is my 11-year-old daughter, Parker. She's never killed a deer before, but I'm very excited about what could happen this week. They showed us how they clean guns at FTW, making sure the gun is reliable and accurate. The gun Parker is using is the Ruger American in 6.5 Creedmoor. This one is the compact version, so it's a bit smaller stock, a shorter length of pull. It's going to fit her better and she's going to be more comfortable shooting it all week long. I really like it. It's fun and the instructors are really nice, they have really good food. <laughs> we spent some time in the classroom, then we went down to the 100 yard range. Right before Parker was about to shoot her first shots, she turned to me and said, wait a minute, is this gonna kick? And I just smiled and said, no, you'll be fine. She did great, the gun fit her great, and she shot it all week. Sighted in the guns at 100, now we've come up to a bigger range to really true the gun. We're on at 100, now we go to 200, 300, 400, and so on, and we're testing to see if our dope is correct. So when we make those adjustments of what we think it's gonna be based on the ballistics and make those hits. If we're not making the hits, we need to correct that, and then we're gonna fine tune what those adjustments in the scope need to be in real life for our bullets, for our situation. All right, so Parker, tell me what we just did. I shot a 500 yard. Target? Target, and I made it. You hit I 500 hit yards. I hit it. That's way further than anything you've ever hit. One of the great things they do here at FTW Ranch is when they're doing their hunter training, they really put you into hunting scenarios to really make it real and prepare you. What we're doing right now is using natural terrain to shoot from. So we have rocks, we're shooting from the ground and prone, and figuring out how to set up for that shot in different targets all around the mountain. Shoot, reload, follow-up shot. Oh my God, there he is. Shoot that red target next to the mountain goat, and then right uh, on the mountain goat, if you take a look, you should see a kill zone clearly marked. There's gonna be a circle on the kill zone. Parker, is it gonna be a good position or not so much? You like that? Anything that I can do to make it better? Or is it still? Resting perfect, huh? Okay, tell me uh, when you're ready. I don't see any wind. You're ready. Okay, red target, spotter is on. Hit, dead center. One of the more fun drills we did was actually having two different targets at two different ranges. So this is again a drill to replicate hunting scenarios where you shoot an animal, but maybe he doesn't go down, maybe he takes off running one way or another. You have to run the gun, you have to adjust your scope. You have to reacquire the target in a different spot and make that hit. It's a fun challenge and we actually did pretty good. This is the hits drill, formerly known as the hair in the scope drill. What are you talking about? Hair in the scope drill. What do you think? Why is it called that? Animal. You're right, have you been here before? You must have did your homework. So not your hair, but animal hair, why? Hair in the scope drill because we've done four days of training, a lot of different scenarios, and sometimes, no matter how much a person has been training and practicing, they get down, there's their target, they get super excited, they got hair in the scope, and they forget everything that they've learned. The hair in the scope drill. Multiple targets at many different distances. So the challenge was on the shooter at this point. Ready, this is 325 yards, you're gonna have five seconds to make this shot. Ready. Five, four, 
three, two, impact! Nice. Nice, reload, get the little one in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, wow, she got them both! <laughs> How did Parker do? Well, she beat everyone in the class, except me, of course. Definitely a very proud moment. Now it was time for Parker to put everything she's learned to the test on a whitetail hunt. Walking into the right feeder right now, I think it's an untagged doe. Well, we got set up on the side of a mountain we're watching as the sun she comes up. Down? It's a beautiful morning. Oh, she's, and we're watching a few deer. She's moving. But then, here comes the fog. And every minute that went by, the fog got lower and thicker. So, we got in the Jeep and moved out on the ranch to try a different spot. You might not need all the magnification. You just need to be able to find it yeah. quickly. Okay, so you could, we can shoot just like this if it's really close. But if it's further away, like one more hill over, mm -hmm. and you need magnification, you may have, you'll have time to zoom in, but a lot of time you don't have time to zoom out. Okay. So we're just gonna leave it right there. Same thing if you start walking and you're following a trail, mm -hmm. and you go into like that thick brush over there, mm -hmm. you know you won't be able to see very far. Yeah. So you might as well put it on low power. It's just, uh, it's just organizing yourself so that you're ready for the situation yeah. that's most likely to happen. Mm -hmm. Cool. We got on a new spot and we actually started seeing some deer, but it was evening and we were losing light fast. Parker got on a deer, but frankly, it just got too dark. This is our last day at FTW and our last chance to get Parker a deer. I was starting to get a little bit nervous. I wanted to go hunting because my great grandpa did it and my great great grandpa did it and it was kind of like a generational thing. You can try to find this one that doesn't have that. I think there's some in that feeder. Can you see the feeder right down here? Yeah. How many deer are there? I think there's like one or two. So we saw three deer coming down the hill. They were eating at the feeder and then she started walking. Look to the right of the feeder. She was looking at us, but we couldn't shoot because she was looking like right at us. Too much. She's, don't move too much. She's looking at us. Try shoot. Right. Yeah, you're ready. Take a big breath. Good. Reload it. Reload. So she turned a little sideways, and I shot, and I got it. And right here. You know, this is the trail she took. Okay, I'm gonna follow you. Blood. See blood right here. The hardest part was tracking it. Cause I'm like, oh, I can't find the blood. Oh, where is it? Ah, uh, and it was just hard. I see, oh my what? God, I see her, I see her. Oh, let's go. She's dead. Did you? <gasps> That's your deer. All right, so here, look, be careful. It might still be alive. All right. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's jiggling. It's dead. All right. I thought it was a rock at first. Very good. Look at your deer. Yeah. So it came out there, but that wasn't the side that you shot. Yeah. So we'll look at the other side. The bullet, it might have it, 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 uh, went through at an yeah. angle, right? Nice deer. I thought a deer. First deer? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. One, One 
two, two, three, go. I'm going to tell other kids it's it's fun. You just have to be quiet and pay attention and be precise and calm and, and collective. We did it. He had blood in your hands, thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you, no! There's so much more to hunting than just shooting an animal. And this week has really prepared my daughter for a lifetime of hunting. I gotta thank FTW Ranch for helping us out and of course Ruger for the gun. They all worked great, what an experience.